Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 274. The title today is The Call of the Wise. Mm. Now, Scripture indicates the existence of a body of knowledge reserved for the Prototokos teachers. <coughs> And they're going to receive it at the beginning, the beginning of the end of this age. Because the scripture mandated that that would be the time in which it would be revealed. Daniel, 12th chapter, verse 4. As we're turning. Yes. But since the beginning of sorrows <coughs> is the beginning of a new age. No, it's not. Okay. Beginning of sorrow is the beginning of the end of this age. If the beginning, mm -hmm. if the beginning says, then will the end come? Okay. <coughs> so, but the how do you nail down the end? But the conditions mm. are changing. All right. The conditions will be totally altered by the time of the end of the age. Okay. So we see that the conditions change before it actually arrives. Right. Yes. <coughs> Daniel 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So the book is shut up to everybody until a specific time in which those that it's destined for will receive it. Who are the many running to and fro? Humans, the human race. Those who, those who, who uh, are not receiving the knowledge in other words. Yes. That's what you have in society. People going to and fro, like ping pong balls bouncing off a wall. So, in other words, unless they're doing what we do each and every day, they are the many running to and fro. No matter yes. how many times they study the Bible, they read this, they read that. Unless you have direction in your life, that's all sure. you're going to do is... Yes. The word says, and knowledge shall increase. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say godly knowledge. It's man-made knowledge. Okay. They keep talking about how we're learning more and more and more. Yeah, learning more and more, but they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Because they rejected God. So all it is, is knowledge. They know something. Mm -hmm. But they can't put it together. Do you describe that as Solomon's wisdom? No. Solomon had understanding. Okay. They just have knowledge. Which, <clears throat> our science is based off of uh, okay. knowledge. Uh, and their <laughs> wisdom, <coughs> they've rejected everything that they can see, feel, taste, smell, and hear, put under a microscope. Yes. So their knowledge is just information. It's, yes. There is no learning, there's no advancement, there's no keys, you know, to a door opening or anything. It's application of knowledge but never understanding of what <coughs> is being <coughs> learned, what's being understood, what's being received. Science does not have a clue as to how the universe operates. It just has specific facts about how the universe operates. And they're learning more and more and more. The more they learn, the more they compile knowledge, but they never reach a point of what it's all about, what the significance of. You ask the scientist, mm. what runs the universe, and you get half a dozen different theories. The Bible talks about that. It's a science falsely called. <clears throat> ever learning, ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Mm. Why? Because they reject God. You reject the first cause, how are we going to come to an understanding of his creation? <coughs> <clears throat> Drop 
Drop down to verse 8 to 9. Daniel 12. <clears throat> And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Then they will be unsealed. They will be revealed to those to whom it was initially a sign. Should we understand that the end is somewhere between the beginning of sorrows and the end of the gathering? <coughs> yes. <coughs> Whereabouts in that range? Well, now. Now. You're learning this now. Yep. Yeah, Entering into the beginning of sorrows, all right. which will lead to the end of the age, the teachers learn first. The students learn at the end of the age. So we're about to be graduated to start teaching. Yes. I hope you're all hearing this. Yes. This is why we're doing these lessons. <laughs> That's the very reason. Uh, this is, this is God's doing. This is not man's doing. Let's go on. <coughs> <coughs> Scripture teaches the Father would choose a group in which he imparted the ability to understand and apply the hidden revelations. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 8 to 9. <coughs> Wherein he, the Father, hath abounded. The word abounded there comes from a Greek term, perisio, which means excelled. It means superabound. So when which he hath excelled toward us in all wisdom and prudence. So what it's talking about is a group in eternity, the Father has made available the ability to excel in revelation, knowledge, and understanding. The potential is given to the teacher to comprehend in its <coughs> fullness the revelation of God, the plan of God, the will of God. So you, you say that the proof <coughs> is the, the stewardship, yes. the stewardship of the revelation? Yes, okay. yes. Continuing. <coughs> Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. And what we find here, <coughs> you got to picture this. In eternity, this is what he's talking about. The Father revealed to those who He had ordained, ordained to be the teachers everything. And He gave Him good pleasure. He's the master teacher. He didn't have a problem with people not wanting to hear what He had to say. Mm -hmm. And He delighted in giving it all to the sons so that they'd be prepared. The book of Daniel was a precursor that would be here on earth when the individual incarnated, that w the generation that they incarnate, where they come in contact with the word, the word is open, and the mind, the memory re remembers, understands what's being imparted. What's being imparted? The will of God, the master plan of the Father. This is what we're looking at. Having made, verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, 
according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. That, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So when we look at the plan of the fathers here, at the time of the dispensation of the knowledge of God, the Father would take that individual and put him in a position where he would receive what he had been given in eternity. You were across the pond, he took you, I want you here. He was where he was, I'm going to link you up with somebody. This is why we are here now. It's not an accident. It's pre-planned by the Father so we would be the recipients of the revelation. So we can impart it to our brothers and sisters at the collapse of this pseudo-reality. The information was closed and sealed till the time in which the Father designated that it should be available. Now, <coughs> Scripture teaches <coughs> at some time in their earthly lives, the Father went apart his master plan of the ages. We just read the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gathered together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So the Father went in part. He's going to judge the earth. Society is going to collapse. This thing is going to fall <clears throat> like a house of cards. At that time, you will be inculcated with the knowledge. I will send you forth to feed those to whom... I have directed you to feed. Turn to Matthew 24. Verse 45, Matthew 24, verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meet in due season. When did this happen? We just read Ephesians, the first chapter. It happened in eternity. The Lord said, the Father said, I'm authorizing you to do this. I've set the time in which the X, Y axis is going to cross. You're going to be in a position to receive and to give. And he gave him pleasure to do it. That's the thrilling part. Now, Scripture teaches the gathering will involve the heavens and the earth. So the gathering is not just local. It's going to connect all things in Christ in the heavens and on the earth. Back to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 10. That, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. So the gathering 
that is started at the time of the beginning of sorrows is going to end in which the connection between the heavens and the earth will be completed. What does that mean? That means <coughs> that those that the Father has ordained to be teachers are not going to be confined to teaching those on earth. Their teaching is going to expand into those in the heavens as well. Which I give a sigh of relief. Whew. Because you won't realize until you see it what a thrill it will be to give this priceless matchless revelation to people that really appreciate hearing it. They will gobble it down. They won't be able to get enough of it. <clears throat> Let's go on. Scripture teaches those in the heavens also will be given understanding of the hidden mysteries of the Father's plan. Daniel, the 12th chapter, we see an example of this. <clears throat> Those in the heavens are just as ignorant of God's plan as those that are on earth. Why? Because the revelation knowledge was not given to them. Just like it was not given to the human race. It was reserved for the prototokis to teach both those on earth and those in the heavens. <coughs> Daniel 12. And we're going to read... Verses 3 to 6. <coughs> and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. These are the teachers. These are the repositors of revelation knowledge of the Father. Remember what we said in the lesson last night. Everything in eternity is experienced in the element of light. Your wisdom is going to be manifested and acknowledged as light. Those that carry the greatest light will be those that are the wise. Notice what it goes on to say. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now the churches, the leadership, teach and feel that soul winning is the highest calling. Matter of fact, that was told to me just recently. And you win souls, you're going to be the one that's great and great, most greatly honored. Well, that's not what this scripture is telling you. This scripture is telling you the ones that are going to be greatly on, greatest honor is going to be to the wise. Their wisdom, their light, is going to rival the galaxies that we see in the universe. Now notice what it, will, when it goes on to say. They that turn many to righteousness. This is soul winning. As the stars forever and ever. They're going to have a glory, but the glory in comparison to the wise is greatly less. Lessened. They're going to shine like a star. Mm -hmm. The wise are going to shine like a galaxy. Wisdom, godly wisdom, is the essence and the quintessence of wealth in eternity. Let's go on. But now, O Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river, the other on that side of the bank of the river. Now Daniel is looking into the heavens in a vision. This is not earth. <coughs> and 
One said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So you have people in heaven that are wanting to know revelation knowledge of events that are going to take place on earth. And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand, and held his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times, and half time, <clears throat> time, time, and half, and when, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. <coughs> So you have here a running dialogue of events that are going to take place at the end of the age. Are not comprehended in their fullness, except somebody there explains it to them. Now we're going to give you an example of something that's going to be difficult to understand if you see it from a human perspective. But if you see it from God's perspective, You'll be easy to understand. Daniel 8, verses 13 to 16. Daniel has a vision. He talks about his vision starting in verse 2. And after the turn, I'm going to read. I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and I saw in a vision I was by the river Ulai. So he begins to explain what he sees in the vision. <coughs> Picking it up in verse 13. <coughs> Then, so after he finishes seeing the vision, <clears throat> then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which he spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to get both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Who is this speaking? A saint. Who is a saint? A glorified human. Uh, one that comes out of the human race that has been glorified. And it came to pass... When I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. <clears throat> the word man here is Ish. It's not human. It's an angel. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai. Now this word man is Adam. He's human. So you have two men. One approaching Daniel, who is an angel, and one in a rarefied, higher position <coughs> that is located in another location. I heard a man's voice between the banks of Ulai, which called and said, <coughs> Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So Gabriel is the man that's standing before Daniel. The man who calls to Gabriel and tells him to make an explanation is the saint that's been giving the information to those in the heavens. This is a prototokis. Okay. So we understand from that, therefore, that the rapture obviously has happened. No, it hasn't. How is he glorified? <coughs> He hasn't even been born yet. Of course, it's in the future, isn't it? I told you, yes. you can't see it from a human perspective. Yes. Yes. You have to see it from Elyon. Elyon is a reality. 
personified not limited by time and space and material limitations whatsoever. He's giving us the prototokos revelation of the ultimate position that we are going to exercise. So the prototokos that you're referring to is the earthly counterpart or the heavenly counterpart? Heavenly. Okay. It's in heaven. All right. So this is this is the fellow. So self. Daniel is looking into eternity. He sees a vision, events taking place. He can't understand it. There is a, a saint in the vision that's giving instruction to people in heaven, and he's in contact with Daniel on earth. Daniel is wa wanting somebody to let him know what what is this vision I just had. So a man is appears before him. The saint tells the man who's the angel Gabriel to give Daniel the revelation. So the revelation is given to the angels by the prototokos who also give it to humans. Yes. So, so it's just one, one, one person. One Excuse. particular person. So it's just one particular saint. Yes. Yes. One saint, who is a okay. custodian of revelation knowledge. Mr. Smith. Know ye not that we shall judge angels. Yes. This is a saint telling Gabriel. Yes. Go do it. Which is, <coughs> he's telling Gabriel to give him the revelation that he gave Gabriel. Gabriel didn't know. The saint had to give it to him. We see this in another part of scripture also. Principle. <clears throat> scripture teaches the angels which give revelation to men are themselves given the revelation by the prototokos saints. Daniel 8. Daniel 8. We did verses 13 to 16. Now we want Daniel 9, 21 to 23. <coughs> Daniel prays. Prayer. Because he's read about the captivity being ended uh, by the people in uh, Babylon by the prophecy of Jeremiah. Daniel reads this. He also reads about other things that he doesn't have understanding of. So he's praying to the Lord to give him understanding. Pick it up, starting in verse 13. I mean, uh, we give. Uh, we start in verse... Um, Twenty-one to twenty-three. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision, <clears throat> we talk about chapter eight. Gabriel came and gave him revelation, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. This happens twice. Gabriel is sent by the saint, who is a prototokos, to give Daniel an understanding of the next vision that he has. This takes place, there's a space of time between what we read in chapter 8 and what we're reading in chapter 9. But both times, the revelation is given to Daniel from the same source. The Prototokos saint. Why? Because it's the Prototokos saints that have been given the authority to be the teachers over those on the earth and all in heaven. It's a whole household. 
Yes. Why is Gabriel involved at all? Why? Yeah. He's a messenger. Okay, but see, the Protarchus has to give the angel the, the, the message to give the angel to Daniel. Yeah. So I'm I wonder why the saint just doesn't give it to the Because <clears throat> the angels <clears throat> are being taught just as well as the humans. Mm -hmm. They're students of the Protodokus. Sure. <clears throat> so <clears throat> in this particular capacity, the angel's only telling them what he's been given. Yeah. And that's how it's gonna be when we get receive our complete calling. Yes. So when they talk about uh, giving the skill, that, that's a that's a physical, that's an action for it, right? Her skill, but are they going to be training, training for something? No, he's talking about the ability to understand type of skill. Okay. Revelation knowledge is a skill. Okay. The ability to impart it to somebody else is a skill. When you can get people to understand what you have been given, then your capacity is honed to pass on what you have received. That's what makes a good teacher.